Hi, today we're going to install the new ACE-1 DJI Innovations uh, Autopilot on a Coptaworks AF25. Inside the box you'll see there's three major components to the uh, ACE-1. You have the IMU, and you'll notice how small it is. The IMU The IMU actually contains a 3-axis gyro and a 3-axis accelerometer. This actually replaces the helicopter's uh, uh, typical gyro that is controlling the, uh, the rudder servo. This will get mounted somewhere near the center of gravity. Uh, it has to be mounted in such a way that it's either uh, parallel to the side of the helicopter in one of four orientations, always 90 degrees. This is probably where we'll mount this one. It'll be facing this direction. This is the main controller unit. It's the brains of the entire uh, system. Uh, it has some CAN bus plugs on it, one on this side, and there's also one on this side. Uh, so you take the IMU, which is, contains the gyros, and you're basically going to plug that in into the CAN bus like that. The uh, CAN bus is just a high-speed serial bus that allows all the components of the ACE-1 uh, to talk to each other. The last part of the uh, DJI system is actually the, the GPS and compass sensor. And that's this little tiny unit here. It also ties on to the main controller with a CAN bus connection and you do it the same way. You plug it in here. The next step for setting up uh, the DJI is just to uh, run uh, the receiver extensions to the GJI. So basically uh, we've already plugged in the one side for all these extensions for everything we're gonna have to connect for the servos and uh, the governor sensor and stuff. So basically just use your chart here and match them up whether you have uh, Futaba or JR and uh, plug them all in where they go. All right, so now that we got all the pigtails connecting the DJI to the receiver, now we just need to connect the servos and the governor sensor to the GJI. And uh, that's it. We're getting ready to install the uh, GPS compass module. Uh, this small module here, you see it's got some uh, flashing lights. These are the indicators they use to uh, program the unit and kind of give you the status of what's going on. Uh, we ran out of long tie straps, so we had to kind of kludge up some longer ones. Uh, one thing you're going to need is some long thin tie straps that wasn't in the kit. So this thing sits on here. The distance between this unit and the tail rotor has to be a minimum of four inches. We've got better than that. We're probably nine or ten inches. Uh, and it has to be at least 15, and when, 15 inches away from any kind of electronic uh, motor noise or, or gas engine noise. So this is where it's going to go. Okay, now we have the uh, DJI system uh, physically installed. We haven't configured it. Uh, you'll notice we have this JR receiver now plugged into the DJI control unit. And we have the CAN bus cables connected, one going to the IMU and the other one actually going to the compass sensor back here at the tail. Uh, what we're going to have to do now is, before we button all this up, uh, we're going to have to configure a couple things uh, in software. Uh, one of those being the physical distances between the center of gravity, which is typically right near the, the, the center of the rotor shaft uh, going down into the gearbox, and the distance from there to the, your compass, and the distance from there to your IMU. You also have to tell the software which direction uh, the IMU is facing. It is sensitive to that. It gives you uh, uh, four choices. You can either point it back like we've got going here, you can point it left or right, or you can point it forward. Uh, since our electronics box is positioned uh, at the rear here, everything made sense to do it this way. So all of this will get tidied up, but one of the things they tell you in the manual is, you know, really don't bother doing that until uh, you've got most of it configured. 
Now we're ready to do the software side of the DJI setup and uh, we have ours installed on a portable laptop. You're probably going to need some sort of uh, laptop because you're going to have to change these parameters out in the field when you're testing and stuff. Um, I just wanted to go over a few of the features of the software uh, when we got it on here. First of all, over here on the left side are all the different uh, setup pages. So each time you click on this it goes to a different page. And uh, you also have a little arrow right here that can go to a couple of more parameter or a couple more pages. Um, let's see what else. Up here you have a bunch of buttons you can push, you can uh, press. Uh, import and export is if you want to uh, sa save your uh, complete file. Uh, you can uh, of course export it and save it or import a separate one. Um, and over here we have read and write. These buttons we'll also be using a lot. Anytime you enter a parameter, you need to you need to press the write button before it actually gets saved into the DJI. And uh, so, for example, in this one, say we were going to change our center of gravity, we could come in here and change it. And uh, if there's a setting that's not saved in the software, it turns red. So that's kind of your warning that you need to go up and write it to save it to the DJI. Um, also, if you've already had a setup done, when you first hook up the DJI, you'll want to come back and read to make sure that the software has all your latest settings. And the read button can also be used to, as a double check to make sure the settings are in there correctly. Um, moving down here on the bottom, uh, when you're connected, you should have a green light here. And anytime you're writing, I've noticed that the blue light flashes, just to give you an idea of what these, this stuff does. And then also down here we have a couple other uh, things right here. And these will all be kind of activated later in the setup, but these are kind of to let you know your switch positions. So for example, this one I can switch to auto and on with the transmitter after we get it set up. And for example, the gyro I can go from rate to heading lock. And uh, same thing if you have uh, some of these other settings. Step one of our setup is uh, telling the software the location of our IMU and our GPS in relationship to the center of gravity of the helicopter. So first of all it needs to know the orientation of the IMU. In our case uh, the little arrow on the IMU is pointing backwards so we click the backwards button. The next step is you need to tell the DJI the location of your center of gravity of your helicopter in relationship to the IMU and the uh, GPS compass. Uh, so what you're going to have to do is find your center of gravity of everything and measure distances. So if your helicopter is set up correctly, your uh, center of gravity should be right on your main shaft. If it's not or you haven't checked it, now would be a great time to do that because it will also make your helicopter fly better. So you need to measure this distance here and also the distance from here to the uh, compass on the tail. And you need to do this for all three axes. So in our case, the y-axis is going to be zero for us because our IMU and our GPS are both mounted on the center line of the helicopter. And the third axis, the z-axis, is the vertical center of gravity. This is a little bit more, hard, a little more difficult to figure out in the instructions. They give you a great idea and uh, you can hang the helicopter from the tail rotor and also hang a plumb bob next to it and wherever the plumb bob crosses uh, here it'll be that'll be your vertical center of gravity. Uh, we don't really have an ability to do that with this helicopter since it's so big and we don't want to hang it from the tail. So uh, we just kind of picked it up from the side and we were able to figure out pretty close to where the center of gravity is. Um, if you go into the software here, it gives you kind of an example of what each axis is for and which is a positive and negative number, which is obviously very important. So in this case, if you had your IMU in the back here, uh, a back is considered a negative number as it, sa as it says right here. And uh, our numbers all ended up being negative uh, just by chance. You may have a positive number in there also. Now we're going to set up the uh, channel that controls basically the different autopilot modes. Um, there's three modes. You have manual, attitude, and uh, full auto and they're kind of somewhat self-explanatory. Manual is if basically the autopilot is completely off and auto is with the autopilot on using GPS and everything. And attitude I kind of figure is like a mix. It's, it still uses the stabilization and you're telling the 
helicopter what attitude you want to fly, but it doesn't use the GPS at all in attitude mode. Basically, we need to set this up on uh, one channel to get between these different modes. You can, uh, ideally, you probably would want to use a three position switch. If you have a three position switch, that's great, and you probably want to try and go to the middle position and use your sub trim to get to attitude and then you want to use your endpoints to try and dial in the manual ends. Basically what you're going to have to do is uh, eventually you want to get to where you can switch back and forth between all these different modes. Um, you, and you'll be using your sub trims to get the line. Most likely your little line here will not be lined up with anything when you start so then you just have to use your endpoints and sub trims until you can get all the lights to light up flipping your switches. The next step after that is you need to program your fail safe. So in our case we actually had to take the sub trim and move off from the uh, we had to move off until we got into the fail safe section here. Hopefully I can still get it. There we go. So you need to move off until you get into fail safe and then you can save that fail safe memory into your transmitter and uh, set it back up the way it was before. And you want to be able to test this mode by turning off your transmitter. So in this case I can turn off the transmitter and it will go into fail safe. One more thing on the software screen is up here it shows you what step you're on in the setup as compared to the manual. And some pages actually have more than one step. So in this case this is step 2 and step 7 out of 8 possible steps. Step three of setup is uh, if you have a fly barless helicopter, which in our case we have actually have a fly bar, so we're going to be skipping step three and we go right to step four, which is swash plate setup. And it actually says it's step three here, but that's a little bit of a discrepancy between the manual. But uh, swash plate setup uh, should be pretty uh, familiar for most people who've done uh, any CCPM setup of any helicopter before. The big change with the DJI is that now all the CCPM programming is done in the software and not in the transmitter. So the first thing you need to do is uh, set your swash plate type and uh, most people will be either uh, H3 or an HR3 and uh, if you click on each one it'll show a picture of it over here or, or you can go uh, to the manual and see what all the different types are. After you get all the directions of your swash plate moving in the right or direction, then you'll just have to set up like you would on any other CCPM helicopter. You need to use these trim numbers here to make sure the swash plate is level, and then you can adjust these numbers down here to adjust the throw of the swash plate. And as always, you always need to hit right to save the settings while you're doing this. Step five is setting up the uh, tail gyro. So the first thing you probably want to do on this step is to tell the software what type of servo you have. You know, you have three choices, analog and uh, digital with 760 microseconds or 1520. Um, if you're unsure of the type of uh, response of the servo, uh, most all servos are actually 1520. Um, it should be pretty obvious in the specs if you have a 760 mic uh, servo. Uh, some of the Futaba servos like the ones we have are 760. So go ahead and uh, tell it what type of servo you want and right click right. Now you can go plug in your tail servo and you can do the other settings. You want to just check to make sure your transmitter is uh, moving the right direction of the tail and then you can also set the limits just like you would in any uh, normal gyro setup. Step six is uh, setting up your throttle control. Um, you have, first of all you have two choices here. Um, the DJI has a built-in governor so if you're using a gas or nitro powered engine and you want to use the built-in governor you can click this one over here. If you're using an electric helicopter or you want to use your own governor you'll uh, push this button here. And then the rest of this page is for the governor setup. Um, so in our case it's pretty self-explanatory. You're just going to enter in the desired rotor RPM, your gear ratio, and then uh, you want to make sure you have your throttle range set up correctly before you do this step and you basically just want to uh, go to each position, your max throttle, your idle throttle, and your uh, cutoff or your stop throttle setting 
And uh, when you go to each position, you just pr press the set max button. And uh, later you can go back and hit the test button to test the servo movement at each position. And uh, if you've done this step properly, you'll get a green circle over here. Okay, now we're on step seven for transmitter calibration. This is a pretty simple step. All you do is you go to uh, the transmitter monitor page and you hit start. And uh, you're just moving the sticks around and make sure and they re making sure they reach the limits there. So the software knows how far the, the uh, outputs are. And then you just hit finish. Step eight is the system check. This is basically where we're going to make sure that the corrections and responses of the autopilot are in the, moving in the correct direction. So we go to this page and then up here you see it says switch to auto mode and then hit start. So we go to the transmitter and I flip it into auto mode and then it allows you to, that button lights up so you can click it. And after you click it, it's going to go to this section first and our swash plate is going to start to move. And if you look here, it tells you what's supposed to happen. You're sp first it's supposed to go up, then down, then up. So usually the first time you click the button, it's hard to catch it quick enough, so usually you have to come back here and hit the recheck button. It went up, down, then up. And as you can see, sometimes it starts with an offset and then it always comes back. So I'll try it one more time so you can see it. It's going to center and then go up, down, up. So in this case, our settings are correct, so I don't need to change anything. If it, if it went down first instead of up, then you would have to go here and select this reverse button and uh, recheck it until you got it right. And then basically you do the same thing for up, down, you do it for forward, backwards, and left, right, and you also do it for counterclockwise and clockwise of the helicopter. This is for the tail rotor direction basically. Okay, when you're finished with this test and you're done setting up the tail rotor direction, to get out of this mode you basically just click back your uh, transmitter back into manual mode and it'll take it out of this mode. Now we're going to verify that the IMU is actually issuing uh, corrections to pitch and roll and, and yaw. Uh, so as I lift the tail up and you watch a squash plate, you'll see that it is, is making the corrections that would be required to bring the helicopter under control. The same is also true when we try to move the tail. You'll notice that the IMU is issuing the corrections to the tail uh, rotor uh, to uh, put it back where it should be. And the final correction would be for roll. As we tip the helicopter and you watch the squash plate, you'll see indeed it is doing the right correction. So that verifies that the IMU is doing what it's been programmed to do uh, to correct the helicopter in every uh, aspect. Okay, now we're getting ready to start compass calibration mode. And to enter into the calibration mode, you have to do uh, 10 full cycles from manual to autopilot mode. And then once you've done that, you should see two, the two blue lights on the GPS uh, mode here. So here we go. And there we go, we have the two lights. Okay, we've got a blue light, so now we're going to go ahead and start rotating the helicopter. The idea is to rotate it until we get a green light, which means it's ready for phase two, the vertical calibration. Okay, we have a green light. Now we're going to have to have a, uh, a buddy and we're going to rotate the helicopter vertically and rotate in a circle again. Ready? Okay. We got a white light for one, two, three seconds. That's good. Let's set it down. There we go. So now the uh, GPS system and compass is calibrated and uh, we're ready for the next stage.